Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here and Apple today just released the macOS Monterey 12.0.1 RC, a release candidate. We are so close to release here now. And they also held the new MacBook Pro event today and they introduced the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. All the information that you need to know about the release candidate of macOS Monterey, including all the changes and features along with unsupported Mac news. And we're gonna talk about the release date of macOS Monterey and a quick update on universal control. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Apple released the 12.0.1 release candidate at 1.07 p.m. Central Standard Time. They also released a bunch of release candidates with Monterey, including iOS 15.1 release candidate, iPad OS, Watch OS, TV OS, Audio OS for a HomePod on the Mac OS side, the Catalina Security Update 2021-007 release candidate, and the Mac OS Big Sur 11.0. 11.6.1 release candidate. Along with those updates, Apple also released the mobile device update and a pro video formats update. Let's talk about what is the 12.0.1 update. You might think, well, wait a minute, where's 12.0.0? Well, what I have up here is the previous macOS Big Sur release schedule with the M1 MacBook Air, Mini, and 13-inch MacBook Pro from last year. If you look at this, Apple released a 11.0.1 .1 beta, then a release candidate, and then a final version. And the reason why they do that is the brand new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros need an operating system to be installed in it before it leaves the factory and it's starting to ship to customers and Apple stores. So on those Macs right now, my guess is that 12.0.0 will be on that. And that version will never be available to the public. The only people that will see that is anybody that bought a brand new MacBook Pro. And it's usually probably beta nine or beta eight or even beta 10 at this point. It depends on when the MacBook Pro started manufacturing it. And that's why we're getting 11.0.1. .1. They didn't stop work on Monterey after they shipped that OS to to the factory to, to install on the new MacBook Pros. They continue development work on it. Now that's why we're getting 12.0.1 as a release candidate. And that's what's going to be released for the final version. And I just wanna give a quick explainer on that one. 12.0.1 release candidate was released as a Delta update and software update, also as an M1 IPSLE restore file, and the public beta was also released. Again, Apple changed that in beta 10. Instead of having the public beta the next day, they released the same day as the developer releases, which is really nice. The only thing that we're going to get tomorrow is the full installer of the release candidate, which should hit around 12 o'clock noon Central Standard Time. And as you can see, I'll put that immediately up on my macOS Monterey database. And if you need that M1 restore file, I updated the link here for your M1 restores. Let's talk about the release candidate update size. On my 2020 M1 Mac Mini, it was still under two gigabytes. It wasn't as small as the Beta 10, which is 1.6 gigabytes, but it was still under two at 1.93 gigabytes. And the total install after it started downloading and software update was 2.75 gigabytes. Now let's talk about the Apple Silicon M1 firmware updates the T2 Bridge OS and Safari updates. What's interesting is, is that Apple did not update the M1 firmware for the release candidate of Monterey. It is the same version as beta 10. That must mean that there's no changes needed. So that's an interesting note. The Intel T2 Bridge OS was updated from 10, 547 5.1 to 10 548 0.0 and Safari was also updated. It was incremented from 916 to 9120. Now let's talk about the build number really quick here. The 1201 update also changed the build version to 21A558. Normal beta releases have a four digit numerical number and usually a letter at the end. When it gets to a final version, it changes to usually three numerical characters and no letter at the end. So this is how we can tell that we're on a final or a release candidate. Now Apple could release a release candidate two and then update the build version again Again, if they find something serious from here until launch, so I'll we'll have to keep an eye on that.
Now let's talk about how long it took to install the release candidate. It only took about 14 minutes of preparation time once the download was done. Then the actual installation time in the black screen in the Apple progress bar took 17 minutes with a total install time from start to usable desktop 32 minutes. So right on target with most of the previous beta releases during macOS Monterey's release cycle. Let's talk about the changes and fixes in macOS Monterey release candidate. First of all, there was eight resolved issues. There was no new features, no new known issues, and no new deprecations. And I can find that by looking at my comparison that I run when I do the comparison between the release candidate notes and beta 10. And all the changes that were in there was just removed fixes that were taken care of in the release candidate. I don't know why Apple doesn't list that in the release candidate notes as a fixed issue, all they do is take off the known issue so you have no clue that it was actually fixed. So that's why I go in here and I grab those out. Just a few notable ones. There's a video playback known issue in full screen mode. When you're watching the Apple TV app, you can't exit the full screen mode. That was fixed. The Safari toolbar vibrancy and background color might adversely affect the legibility of the tab buttons in the tab bar. That was fixed. And finally, for focus, the system doesn't allow notifications to break through a focus even if allow time sensitive notifications is selected. So those are the fixes in the Apple patch notes. Now let's talk about the undocumented fixes that I found or changes that I found in the release candidate. First, let's look at the new wallpapers. Now, when you first come in here, you might not notice the new wallpapers. As you can see, the, all the dynamic ones are the same, but if you scroll down, you'll see the two brand new Chroma wallpapers that were in the new MacBook Pro event that was at the keynote today. So you can see we have Chroma Blue, which is the one I've got selected here, and we also got a nice Chroma Red. So those are really cool wallpapers that were just added to the release candidate. The next changes are in Safari, and we have some pretty interesting changes. So if we open up Safari, we can take a look, and the first thing we'll notice is that the tabs are back. Most people have said that they really like the tab instead of the squared off boxed versions of the different tabs or websites. Now let me show you what that looked like in beta 10. Okay, here is the beta 10 version of Safari. You can see that they're squared off and they're not really tabs. And a lot of people were saying, I really like the tab view. So if we go back here and look, here's those tab views, they are back. So again, this is a change that most people were wanting and they delivered on that. Other changes when we go into the Safari preferences. So let's go into the Safari preferences in the race candidate. Now, if we look here, we'll notice that something's missing right away. The color option has changed again to a different location. So let's go over here to the beta 10 and look at those options in here so you can see what that looks like. We can see here that that show color in the tab bar was moved again. It's been moved around multiple times throughout the beta release cycle, but Apple has finally put that color in show tab bar back to the advanced. So here it is, show the color in the compact tab bar. So as we go back, make sure that compact selected here, go back to advanced and you can uncheck that and then that color disappears from the bar and it's just the regular Safari menu bar. So those are the the changes in Safari. Now let's give another update on universal control. We saw in beta 10 that Apple added a beta marker to the universal control settings, but with the release candidate, that is totally gone. And Apple today updated their macOS Monterey features page to add this number six there. And as you can see here, universal control will be available later this fall. So we might see this in a 12.1 or 12.2 update later this fall to be able to enable universal control in in both iPad OS and in Mac OS. So we'll have to see how that goes. Now, what's interesting is, is that you remember we, I was showing you in beta 10, how that feature can be added here with, when I add the feature flags option to the preferences file that no longer works, that Apple has removed that from the display drop down here. So you can't see the advanced anymore. Also, if you're looking for those sidecar settings, you actually have to go into the ad display, click on your iPad, let it connect, then you you can modify the sidecar settings once the iPad connects. There we go. And then, then you can click on display settings and then you can modify the sidecar settings in here. 
Now, we've been getting a lot of questions on how to update from the beta version that you're on to the final version or the release candidate of macOS Monterey. And that's really cut and dry, and I'll show you how to do that. So when we go into the system preferences, then click on software update, we are on the release candidate now. But the thing is, is that once newer updates come, on, come out, like for example, macOS Monterey 12.0.2 or 12.1, you want to see that on the final or the public release track, not the beta track. To remove yourself, all you need to do is click on these details and then click restore defaults, enter in your administrator password, and then it will remove the beta profile from the software update system and then reset it back to the public version. As you can see, it disappeared here now, and now we're on the public release. So we will no longer see any more beta updates. Now keep in mind, if a new release candidate comes out between now and the release date, you won't see it until it is released to the public. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, the next question is, is that when will macOS Monterey be released to the public? The good news is at the Apple event today, Apple released the information on the release date and they said Monterey will be available to download on Monday, October 25th, most likely at 12 noon central standard time. So we finally have a release date. Now let's go over the benchmarks. I've got the benchmarks from beta 10 here. A single core was a 1754 and a multi-core was 7777. And on the release candidate, it was very close. A 1756 on a single core and a multi-core was 7727. And again, just so we know the we only run these just to make sure that there's not a discrepancy a large discrepancy maybe meaning that there's a problem from beta release to beta release so this is right on target with pr previous releases the next thing I wanted to briefly go over was the brand new MacBook Pros. I'm going to release a video tomorrow because I want, I've got a lot to say about this new MacBook Pro. This is one of the best that I've seen. This new machine is absolutely fantastic. It check marks off so many boxes that pro users, regular users, everyday users have been asking for for years. Again, I've got a lot to say about this new MacBook and I'll put it into one video tomorrow and go over all my thoughts. So stay tuned for that. Now let's talk about some unsupported Mac news. Let's go over Open Core Legacy Patcher. First of all, some of the developers are already looking at the release candidate version to see if there's any issues with this current version. And also the nightly build has been updated to 0.3.1. The current production build is 0.3.0. So we might see this version or a newer version before the release, Monterey release goes out on Monday. Now, a lot of questions that I'm being asked is how do I update my Big Sur Open Core Legacy Patcher Mac to Monterey, and how do I update my beta version of Monterey Open Core Legacy Patcher to the final version? Well, that's pretty cut and dry. And what I mean by that is that you'll want to download the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher to your Mac first because we have to update all the core files of Open Core Legacy Patcher to build in the support needed before we jump to Mac OS Monterey. So what it'll do is you'll download the latest version of the app, you'll build and change all the settings just like you did when you first did it, and then you will install Open Core to your internal hard drive. Then you can reboot and all those new settings will take place. Then you can go into System Preferences, click on Software Update, and you'll see Mac OS Monterey here to be able to update directly. If you have a metal GPU Mac, all you need to do is click on update and it'll come back up and you're all good to go. Now, if you have a non-metal GPU from 2011 or lower, you'll have to apply those post volume patches again when it comes back up. Those are some tips that you'll need to know when you want to update from Mac OS Big Sur Open Core Legacy Patcher to Mac OS Monterey Open Core Legacy Patcher. Now I'm going to have a video out that's going to go over those. So there's no rush to jump to the latest version. Wait till you have everything covered first and you know everything's going to work. And I'll give you a full walkthrough in that video. Always when you jump to a new version too, make sure all your files are backed up. I recommend this to even supported Mac users just in case disaster happens. Now, if they, if you want to jump from a 
beta version of Monterey to a final version, that's the same thing that you've been doing all beta, all beta long, except that you're going to remove that beta profile, just like I talked about earlier, and then click on the update button and you'll bring it to the latest version. So that's unsupported Mac Patcher news with Open Core Lacey Patcher. And that's macOS Monterey 12.0.1 release candidate. Are you excited about the release? Tell me what you think about the new MacBook Pros. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about this. If this video created value for you, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and shared it. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber and a viewer, you know that I truly appreciate you and we'll catch you in the next video, thanks. Update is a the the you the Safari Tubal.